welcome to the next module that is module 5 on mass transfer operation. In this module, we will discuss distillation. Before going to the first lecture on distillation, let us have small recap on our previous lecture. In module 1, we have considered diffusion mass transfer. In module 2, we have considered interface mass transfer. And in module 3, we have considered the different equipments used for the mass transfer operation. And module 4, we have considered the absorption process. And we have looked into different aspects of mass transfer operation and this is the final module we will consider distillation operation. So, this we will cover now. So, in our first lecture we will consider introduction to the distillation operation. Distillation is a method of separation of more volatile component from the less volatile ones of a solution by partial vaporization of the original solution followed by condensation. So, in this case unlike in absorption where we add a solvent the third component to separate a gaseous mixture, but in this case we have a liquid mixture that is partially vaporized and then the solution generates the vapor of the more volatile components and then by condensation it separates the mixture of components. That is why in case of distillation we do not use any third component. So, we take the mixture and then we separate them by based on its boiling point. So, this is typical distillation column we have discussed already. So, distillation is most widely used separation method for liquid mixture. So, this is very widely used and some of the examples as you know one is very common in organic process industries. Like if we consider ethanol water separation where we use distillation. Another one is aniline and nitrobenzene separation in the process of aniline production. For producing aniline, we have byproduct of nitrobenzene and that has to be separated and that is done by distillation. And most common in the industry as you can see in different industries, most common particularly in petroleum refinery. So, refinery has plenty of application of the distillation operations and you could see a huge plant for most of the refineries on distillation. So, a typical distillation column is shown over here as we said and we will just tell you how is the operation of the distillation happen in a distillation column. This is typical tray column which we have shown over here. So, in the tray column it may be packed towers, but in case of tray towers as shown over here, feed enters at some point of the tower. So, you can see over here the feed is entered at some point of the column and then reboiler heated up the liquid from the bottom of the tower and liquid is partially vaporized. So, we have a reboiler here which is shown over here is a partial reboiler and which boils up the liquid and then boils up return back to the column 
and the less volatile components they are comes out as a bottom. So, reboiler heated up the liquid from the bottom of the tower and liquid is partially vaporized that is why it is partial reboiler over here it is used it is not completely vaporized. So, vapor flows off through the trays or packing if it is packed hours it flows through the packing and if it is tray it flows from tray to tray. So, vapor flows off and the vapor leaves at the top and enters into a overhead condenser. So, you can see vapor is leaving at the top of the tower and at the top of the tower you have a condenser. So, through the overhead it goes to the condenser. So, once it enters into the condenser a part of the condensate is withdrawn that is as a top product and rest is fed back into the column as reflux. So, some part of the condensate which is returned back to the column and some part is taken out as a top product and rest is fed back to the column as reflux. Now, what happens during this flows of gas and liquid from top to bottom as the reflux liquid as well as the feed flows down an intimate contact between the liquid and the vapor occurs on each tray or packing surface. More volatile components moves from liquid to the vapor phase. So, throughout the column the more volatile components will move from the liquid phase to the vapor phase and the less volatile component move from the vapor phase to the liquid phase. So, mass transfer happens both from the liquid to the vapor and vapor to the liquid. Concentration of the less volatile increases in the liquid phases as it flows down. So, less volatile components will increase when the liquid flows down from top the less volatile component will enrich in the liquid phase. and the vapors which goes up it will increase the more volatile component. So, a higher degree of separation of the more volatiles from the less volatile is achieved in this way. So, top product what you will get over here in the distillate is a more volatile component and the bottom product will be region less volatile component. So, this is and this will be region So, the top product distillate will be rich in more volatile component and the bottom product will be rich in less volatile component. Now, distillation is an equilibrium stage operation. So, as you can see if there is an intimate contact between the gas and liquid and each tray and we consider it is it reaches the equilibrium between the liquid and vapor. So, distillation is considered is an equilibrium stage operation. So, in order to solve the equilibrium stage problems the vapor liquid equilibria and physical properties of the systems are essential. So, one is the vapor liquid equilibrium data VLE data and the physical properties of the system these two things are required to solve the equilibrium stage problem. The distribution of the component in two phases is governed by the vapor liquid equilibrium relationship. And thus, when two phases are in equilibrium, vapor liquid equilibria data enables us to relate the composition of a liquid phase 
to that of the composition of the vapor phase. So, two phases if we have a relation between the vapor phase and liquid phase and there is equilibria then we can obtain the liquid phase composition to that of the composition in the vapor phase. So, our emphasis will be mainly on binary mixture over here. So, equilibrium data may be obtained by experiments or by thermodynamic calculation or in published sources. So, equilibrium data has to be obtained either we can get from the experimental measurements or it may be some thermodynamic calculations or it will have some published sources. Now, it is typically presented either in tabular form or as an equilibrium diagram. So, equilibrium diagram may take several forms. Uh, these are T x y temperature and pressure mole fraction diagram or mole fractions diagram x y diagram or H x y diagram that is enthalpy mole fraction diagram. So, we will discuss each of them systematically to understand how we can obtain the equilibrium data and how we can solve the stage problem when there is an equilibrium operation. So, first we will consider constant pressure binary equilibrium diagram. So, if the boiling point temperature is plotted versus the liquid composition x, then we obtain the bubble point curve. So, in the top figure over here you can see if we plot x versus bubble point. So, then we can obtain the bubble point curve. So, this is T x the bottom curve red line over here this one is the T x or bubble point curve or saturated liquid line. Now, a plot of temperature and the equilibrium vapor composition that is y is called the dew point curve. In the upper figure you can see blue line over here which is T y curve or the dew point curve or saturated vapor line. So, which is shown over here. So, the y axis we have a bubble point or dew point and then the x axis you have mole fractions x or y. A typical bubble and dew point curve for a binary mixture is given in this figure. The figure shows one common way of plotting the T x y diagram. So, this is called T x y diagram. It represents a binary mixture and all composition are expressed as mole fractions of the more volatile component. So, these mole fractions x and y it represents the mole fraction of the more volatile component not the less volatile component. So, all the compositions are expressed over here in mole fraction unit. So, x is the liquid phase and y in the vapor phase. If we know x and y, we can also calculate the composition of the less volatile one by subtracting from 1. So, 1 minus x would be the less volatile in the liquid phase and 1 minus y would be the more volatile in the vapor phase. The lower curve plots the bubble point of the binary mixture as a function of composition, the upper curve is the dew point curve. So, upper curve is the dew point and lower curve is the bubble point curve. So, for a given temperature and composition, these diagrams what does it tell us? The nature and the composition of each phase of the mixture that is present. When the temperature and composition is given from this diagram, we can tell the nature and the composition of each phase of the mixture that is present. So, we can tell about the nature as well as the composition. Point L gives the equilibrium concentration of A. Over here, you can see at any point at L, 
gives the equilibrium concentration of A in the liquid phase X and point G gives the equilibrium vapor composition Y. If we just join these two points L and G is called the tie line, the, we can draw infinite number of such tie lines for this diagram T x y diagram. A mixture on the lower curve at point L at this one is a saturated liquid and a mixture on the upper curve that is at point G is saturated vapor. Now, what about the region in between these two points L and G? A region which is below L and what is the region which is above G? So, the region below the bubble point curve, so that is a red line below that represents a single liquid phase and the region above the dew point curve represent a single vapor phase. So, the region over here this region is basically the liquid region and this region is basically the vapor region. Now, a mixture at any point S on the tie line. So, at any point if we considered over here say S on the tie line L G between this upper and lower curve is a two phase mixture. So, any point between L and G, so inside this envelope is a two phase mixture, it is a vapor and liquid mixture. It consists of a liquid phase of composition at L and a vapor phase of composition at G in such proportion that the average composition of the entire mixture is represented by S the relative amount we can obtain for this equilibrium phases and that can be related with the segment of the tie lines. The segment of the tie lines is basically L s and G s. So, that is the segment of the tie line. So, the relative composition moles of L divided by moles of G liquid and gas would be equal to line S G divided by line L S, S G divided by line L S. Now, consider a liquid solution at any point E in a closed container kept at constant pressure say at one atmosphere and by moving a frictionless piston. So, it is kept at one atmosphere in a closed container. Now, if the solution is heated, the first bubble of the vapor forms at O. So, uh, as it will be heated this liquid, its temperature you know, at a constant pressure, its temperature will gradually increase through this line vertically and the first drop of bubble will form at point O when it meets the bubble point curve and has the composition of P which is over here the vapor composition will be a P richer in more volatile component. So, as heating continues more and more vapor forms at the expense of the liquid giving rise for example, to liquid U. So, over here and its equilibrium vapor V. Although the composition of the entire mass is still the original as, as at E. So, its composition, so once it reaches the first drop of bubble which will vaporize and then its composition will be at its original composition at E and it will continue to follow this line and having the equilibrium composition changed from P to V. So, now the mole fraction of the more volatile component in the residual liquid decreases and the boiling point of the mixture continues to increase along the 
line. So, along this line T x curve, so its boiling point gradually increases along this line. The last drop of liquid vaporizes at x over here has the composition and boiling point given by the point W. So, it will be here its composition and when all the liquid is vaporized, the accumulated vapor must have the composition which to that of the initial liquid, because after this point all the liquid vaporized. So, the composition which was in the liquid phase would should be the same which is now in the vapor phase, so, that is the initial liquid composition. So, if no further heating is done, then the final state composition and temperature of the vapor is given by point x on the vertical line and through E. So, from here it will go through the upper curve which is the dew point curve, no further heating is done, then the, the state final state which will attend will have the composition and temperature corresponding to x. If we further heat this vapor which is now saturated vapor at this location, if we further heat its temperature will only rise along the vertical line E f. So, from this E it will vertically go to f. So, its temperature will increase along the vertical line and this is called the superheated vapor. The mixture has vaporized as you can see over the temperature range. So, starting from this you no know, temperature over here at say close to 80 degree and it vaporized you no know, up to this location and then heated up and it goes to say 100 degree centigrade. So, the liquid mixture which is vaporized over a temperature range from is basically from the liquid to the vapor is from O to X. So, this is the temperature range where it is vaporized and this is the final temperature change if we take a liquid at this temperature at 80 degree to heated up to 100 degree centigrade temperature. So, this is the overall temperature change, but from liquid to vapor formation the change of temperature will vary between O to X. So, for a, a single liquid there is a single temperature for the vaporization, but in this case you can see the range of temperature. Thus, the term boiling point for a solution has no meaning since vaporization occur over a temperature range that is from the bubble point to the dew point. So, for a mixture its vaporization which happens from the liquid phase to the vapor phase it occurs over a range of temperature. So, for this no liquid mixture or for these solutions we does not have any meaning to call boiling point for a solution or for a mixture. The bubble and dew point curves meet at a point d b. So, you can see over here d b at this point. So, where the both bubble point curves the bottom red line curve and the blue line curve meets at this point d b. So, the boiling point of pure component B at a given pressure and at D A the boiling point of A. So, over here. So, both the curves meet at this location. So, now if some amount of superheated vapor say at point F which is taken over here is cooled while maintaining a constant pressure, so, all the phenomena reappear in the reverse order. So, earlier we have heated taking a liquid at this point E and then it is vaporized and then heated to the its condition at F which is superheated vapor. Now, if we just cool down this superheated vapor keeping the pressure constant, then the uh, phenomena which appear during the vaporization will reappear during the condensation in the reverse order. 
So, condensation for example, starts at x at this location on the dew point curve and the vapor composition changes along x p. So, composition will change from x to x p. When the entire vapor is condensed and the liquid is cooled, we reach a point E vertically below O. So, it will be the final composition when all the vapors will be condensed and the composition will given by you know, O and further cooling it will reach to point E vertically which is called as soft cooled liquid. So, E is a soft cooled liquid. Now, we will discuss about the x y diagram which is shown over here at the bottom of this line of this p x y diagram. The equilibrium diagram which is called x y diagram is also shown in this figure below the t x y diagram and we will often work with plots of vapor phase composition versus the liquid phase composition that is y versus x. So, Usually, we will include a 45 degree line that is in the x y diagram, this is y and this is x. This is the 45 degree diagonal uh, that is at uh, x is equal to y in this x y diagram that is for the reference. So, this is for reference, the 45 degree diagonal is for the reference. These diagrams are typically made at constant pressure. So, each point represents a different temperature. So, each point on the equilibrium curve is represents a different temperatures. An x y diagram like this may be constructed from a t x y diagram by picking a temperature, reading the corresponding y and x and plotting them against each other. So, if we have the T x y diagram, we can pick up a particular temperature and then we can read from this at the temperature what is the vapor and liquid composition and from that we can plot the x y diagram. The point m you can see over here which is x y point on the x y curve correspond to the tie line L g. So, this is L and this is g and this point m is called the tie line which is corresponding to the L g line. Since y greater than x the equilibrium line lies above the diagonal. because diagonal x is equal to y, if y is greater than x, then it will lie above the diagonal line. So, it is above the diagonal equilibrium line. So, this is the equilibrium line. Now, tip is that when the envelope enclosed by the equilibrium curve and the 45 degree line is fat distillation will probably be an easy way to make the separation of the mixture. So, if we have a larger distance from the 45 degree diagonal to the equilibrium curve, if this is fat, then as it is far from the 45 degree diagonal the equilibrium line, the separation of the component mixtures would be much easier by distillation. Now, we will discuss about the constant temperature binary equilibrium diagram. Equilibrium data can also be plotted at constant temperature. In this case, the total pressure exerted by the solution at equilibrium depend upon its composition. So, a lower concentration of A that is at a higher concentration of less volatile species B the mixture will exert a lower total pressure. Typical plots are shown in this figure. So, over here. So, this is P x y diagram at constant temperature. So, as we said 
at a lower concentration of A that is at higher concentration of less volatile component B, the mixture will exert lower total pressure. So, you could see P x curve that is total pressure versus x or total pressure versus y curve, no, they will be you can see over here the when uh, we have a more volatile component very less. So, the system pressure will be low, total pressure will be low because it will exert lower vapor pressure. A horizontal line L g is a tie line, so which is shown over here L g and this line is the tie line. The terminal points L and g indicates the liquid and vapor phase concentration of A under equilibrium. Now, the region below in this case that is P B V this points G S dash and P A V. So, below this plot uh, represents the superheated vapor and above this P B V L S and P A V represents the soft cooled liquid. So, above these regions is the soft cooled liquid. So, this is liquid region and this is the vapor region. Now, if the amount of superheated vapor at the state given by the point R, so which is over here, this is superheated vapor and is compressed isothermally at a constant temperature it is compressed, so its pressure will change. It starts condensing at uh, it reaches at point G, so the first drop of the liquid will form when it reaches point G is corresponding to its liquid composition L. Now, on further compression more vapor will condense and the composition of the accumulated condensates liquid changes along the L s line. So, its composition of the liquid phase will change and it will increase and it will go along the S. So, it will follow along L s and the composition of the vapor changes along the G s dash. At a pressure corresponding to the point S, the vapor condenses completely. So, you can see like here it if you go vertically, so all the vapor corresponding to this point at this pressure will completely condensate. Now, the liquid composition is the same as that of the original vapor composition that is over here. So, it will be the same composition. If the pressure is further raised, the liquid may be considered soft cooled. The equilibrium composition to the tie line L g is represented by point Q p. This is the equilibrium composition on the x y diagram and if we further increase the pressure, it will be soft cooled liquid. The two phase region on T x y or P x y as we have discussed earlier T x y diagram or in this P x y diagram plot in this case narrows down with increasing the temperature and pressure and eventually disappear at the critical point. Now, we will discuss phase rule and ideal VLE. So, if two phases are not in equilibrium the rate of mass transfer is proportional to the driving force, which is the departure from the equilibrium. In all cases, it involves the equilibrium, two phases are involved. For example, gas liquid or liquid liquid and so on. The important variables which affect the equilibrium of a solute depends on the temperature, pressure and concentration. For all cases where there would be equilibrium between the phases, so it involves the important parameters which will affect the equilibrium composition of a particular solute on these three parameters that is temperature, 
pressure and concentration. The equation between the two phases in a given situation is restricted by phase rule. So, as we know that is F is equal to C minus P plus 2. In this case, P is the number of phases uh, in this equation. So, number of phases P, C is the total number of components in the two phases when no chemical reactions are occurring. So, C is the number of components present when there is no chemical reaction and F is the number of variant or degrees of freedom degrees of freedom of the system. So, F is the degrees of freedom. Now, consider an example sulfur dioxide air water system. So, we can see that there are two phases one is the gas phase which will have sulfur dioxide and air and in the liquid phase which is water three components sulfur dioxide and water and then we can consider air as a single component considering an inert you know, component or assuming an inert component. So, if we apply the phase rule in this case we can see that F would be equal to C minus P plus 2. So, here no component is 3 phases to phases plus 2. So, we could see that it will lead to the degrees of freedom 3. So, that means that there are 3 degrees of freedom. Now, if the total pressure and temperature are set only one variable is left that can be set arbitrarily. So, if the mole fraction composition of X A of sulphur dioxide in the liquid phase is set, the mole fraction composition of Y A that is the partial pressure P A in the gas phase is automatically determined. The phase rule does not tell us the partial pressure P A in equation with the selected X A. The partial pressure must be determined experimentally. Now, this problem can be greatly simplified in cases where the VLE behavior of the system is ideal or can be represented in a simple form like this is usually you no know, means we can work with one of the following alternatives that is either we can use Raoult's law or we can use relative volatility. So, either of these two can work uh, to simplify the solving these problems. Now, Raoult's law as you have already learned, Raoult's law relates vapor liquid equilibrium composition of a mixture to the pure component vapor pressure and the system pressure. So, basically Y star into P T would be equal to X into P V that means the P T over here is the total pressure system pressure and P V is the vapor pressure. So, for a binary mixture if we consider A and B then we can write P A star is equal to X into P A V. So, partial pressure of A would be equal to X P A V and P B star would be equal to 1 minus X P B V. Now, if we just substitute in this case P A star and P, A, P B star are the equilibrium partial pressure of component A and B in the vapor and P A V and P B V vapor pressure of A and B at the given temperature. So, we can write the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of A plus partial pressure of B. Now, if we just add them X P A V plus 1 minus x P B V then we will have P A star by P T would be equal to x P A V by P T and hence we can write Y A star P T would be equal to x P A V. So, the Raoult's law equation can be used to calculate the vapor liquid equilibrium data for ideal binary mixture. 
So, please remember that this is only applicable for ideal binary mixture. Now, we will discuss the relative volatility. The greater the distance from the equilibrium curve and the diagonal, the greater the difference in the liquid and vapor composition and easier the separation by distillation. This is already we have said from the diagonal greater is the distance of the equilibrium curve from the diagonal that will be easier for the separation by distillation. So, one of the numerical measure to see the easiness of the separation is called the relative volatility and this is the ratio of A and B in one phase to that in the other phase which can be represented by alpha is equal to y divided by 1 minus y divided by x divided by 1 minus x. So, that is ratio of y a by b in one phase divided by ratio of a and b in the other phase that is over here. So, this will be equal to y into 1 minus x divided by x into 1 minus y. Now, if the relative volatility is constant, this alpha is constant, the expression can be rearranged into the form needed to plot an equilibrium curve for a set of x values. So, we can write y i would be equal to x i alpha i j, alpha i j is the relative volatility of A with respect to B divided by 1 plus x i into alpha i j minus 1. So, with this we can assume a particular value of x and we can calculate the values of y knowing the values of relative volatility alpha. Relative volatility is generally a much less stronger function of temperature than the component vapor pressure. It is much less stronger function with respect to temperature. So, in many system it is acceptable to assume that the relative volatility is constant over a range of temperature and composition. High relative volatility produce x y diagram with a greater deal of separation between the equilibrium curve and the 45 degree diagonal. So, as the values of relative volatility is higher, it will tell about the departure from the 45 degree line and to the equilibrium line. The values of relative volatility will ordinarily change as x varies from 0 to 1. If x is equal to y except x is equal to 0 or 1, relative volatility would be equal to 1. When x is equal to y, then if we put in relative volatility equation, so the alpha would be equal to 1 when x is equal to y. That means, no separation is possible. The larger the value of relative volatility above unity, the greater the degree of separation. So, a relative volatility which is less than 1 is probably the upside down. So, that would be on this side. The more volatile component is in the denominator. So, which is not uh, no case of the separation by distillation. So, we generally look for relative volatility more than 1. So, now let us take an example for using the Raoult's law for relative volatility to solve the problem. N hexane, which is considered component A, and N heptane, considered component B, form the ideal solution. The vapor pressure for this system can be obtained from the Antoine equation. This is the Antoine equation ln PV is equal to A minus B by C plus T, and PV is in millimeter Hg and T is in degree centigrade. Now, the boiling point and constants of A and B and C which is given in the Antoine equations are given in this following tables. N hexane boiling points 
68.82, n heptane 98.5 and a, b and c the constants for this Antoine equations is given. Now, we need to calculate vapor and liquid composition and prepare the bubble and dew point as well as x y diagram for this binary system at one atmosphere total pressure. So, that is the first problem and the second one is a two phase mixture having 60 mole percent of A at 78 degree centigrade is allowed to separate into the liquid and vapor at one atmosphere press total pressure. We need to calculate the composition of the two phases. Now, bubble point of n hexane is given which is over here. So, 68.82 at 1 atmosphere pressure, bubble point of n heptane that is 98.5 degree centigrade at 1 atmosphere which is given over here. This is the typical curve we need to obtain. So, we will discuss this. To obtain this curve T x y data start with a temperature and calculate the corresponding liquid and vapor composition at equilibrium. So, we have to start at a particular temperature. A simple calculation is shown over here. Now, considered at T is equal to 75 degree centigrade which is any point between 68 and 98. Ln PAV is after substituting this parameter A, B and C in this equation, we can calculate PAV is equal to 919 millimeter H. And similarly, we can do for component B, which is this one, component B, ln PBV would be using this parameters over here given at this table. We can calculate vapor pressure of component B, which is 378 millimeter Hg. A is the more volatile components because it is at the same temperature has a more vapor pressure and B is the less volatile component has a less vapor pressure. We have calculated the vapor pressure at a particular temperature. Now, we know that P t is P a star plus P b star would be equal to x P a v plus 1 minus x P b v. So, P a v we have obtained already and P b v also we have obtained earlier and P t is 760 millimeter Hg which is given at one atmosphere pressure. So, if we substitute over here from this equation, we can write 760 would be equal to x into 919 plus 1 minus x into 378. Now, if we solve this for x, we should obtain 0 0.705. So, we can calculate x at this temperature and at this pressure condition. Now, at T is equal to 75 degree centigrade, P t is the total pressure, the liquid phase mole fraction x is known to us. The mole fraction of A in the vapor phase we can calculate that is y would be equal to x into P a v by P t. So, we use the no, Raoult's law and we can calculate y is equal to x into P a v by P t. So, x we have calculated 0 0.705, P a v is 919, P t is the total pressure. So, we can calculate y 0.853. So, uh, using the different temperatures starting in this range from no, 68.82 to 98.5 in similar fashion we can obtain the x and y data and the vapor pressure for both the components. So, then if we plot we will obtain the T x y diagram like this and also the x y diagram over here. So, which is shown uh, below. So, T x y and x y plot we can obtain or simply if you have a T x y plot and we have the tie line we just come down vertically to the 45 degree diagonal and then plot a horizontal line 
and also from this tie line from this point draw a vertical line. So, this vertical line and the horizontal line where it intersects gives the point of equilibrium points. This way either if we have T x y plot we can draw the equilibrium curve you know, x y plot at the bottom or if we have x y plot in a similar fashion we can just draw the tie line and obtain the T x y diagram. Now, the second problem is a two phase mixture having 60 mole percent of A at 78 degree centigrade is allowed to separate into liquid and vapor at one atmosphere total pressure. Now, we need to calculate the composition of the two phases. The state of the feed is set 78 degree centigrade one atmosphere x f is 0.6 it is represented by S lies in the two phase region. So, if we look into over here this is the point where this is say point S is the two phase region. So, point 6 if you come down over here vertically. So, it represents no point 6. So, this point S is in the two phase region and mixture is allowed to separate liquid and vapor. Now, draw a horizontal line through S and it will meet the bubble point curve at B. So, that is point over here. So, this is point B and it will also meet at a dew point curve D here. From this you can obtain you no know, you just come down vertically to the 45 degree diagonal and then go horizontally and then from the point B draw a vertical line and it will meet at a certain point on the equilibrium line and this will give you values of x which is 0.55 and correspondingly the values of y you will get 0.75. So, this way we can solve this type of problem using Raoult's law and so to composition of the vapor and liquid phase for a particular mixture. So, thank you for hearing this lecture and we will continue our discussion on fundamentals of the distillation in the next class as well.